Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders with Marketing Huddle. And today we have with us Kevin Davis, who is a sales management consultant and author of the new book, The Sales Manager's Guide to Greatness. Welcome to the program, Kevin. Well, thanks, Mike. Great to be here. Hey, so I love um, thinking about titles to books or, or, you know, company names, because invariably there is, you know, a story behind it, or, you know, there was a lot of thought that was put into it. And, you know, when I, when I hear, uh, you know, sales manager, obviously target market, and then guide, who I like that, because I like, you know, a checklist or a roadmap or a blueprint, and then guide to greatness, not just, you know, good, to, you know, to being good, but being great. So um, is that kind of the thought process that you were going through when you were titling your new book? Absolutely. Um, you know, the, the, the end result and uh, certainly hope that the title provokes some curiosity. Uh, and, uh, and I would suggest that um, many sales managers kind of approach, you know, they, they had a time in their professional career as sales professionals when they really, um, you know, leapt at learning the science of selling and really entrenching themselves or immersing themselves in, 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 in getting better uh, at the sales process and the sales profession. And then because they did that, they were promoted into sales management. And so my suggestion and, and really hope for sales managers is, to, is that they set, set the bar that their goal is to be a, a more skillful at the skills in sales leadership uh, than they are uh, or were in the sales profession. You know, that's an interesting point, and I'm confident that there's been research studies done on that same, you know, thing where, you know, you were great as a salesperson, and then you were great as a sales manager, and then you started. Um, what have you found is the typical, you know, like time frame or cause of that shift? Because I would suspect that, you know, you go from being a producer to a manager, and then all the extra um, you know, management responsibilities start coming down on you, and then your focus kind of changes. Is that what you you've seen as well? Well, yeah. I, I mean, the uh, uh, the research, and there is recent research on this. Forty uh, percent of companies don't have any budget for sales manager uh, training, and of the sixty percent that do, half of those companies are providing a generic management training program that they're delivering to all their managers, which means that sales managers aren't learning the specific skill sets that they need to manage salespeople, such as assessing rep performance, diagnosing, uh, 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 you know, a motivation rep problem, uh, correcting, uh, you know, behavior that doesn't want to change, uh, you know, uh, uh forecasting, how to do more accurate forecasting, uh, sales process coaching, all the specific skill sets that sales managers need, they're not getting trained. And, and I think the underlying cause is there's a mindset out there uh, among many companies that an A player sales rep will automatically make for an A player sales manager, which doesn't make sense to me because the two jobs are completely different. They yeah. have a completely different set of challenges uh, and uh, and of course a completely different set of skills that need to be mastered in order to achieve greatness. Yeah. So what do you find um, the great sales managers are doing that the average ones are not doing? Well, I, first and foremost is they think differently. They recognize that their customer number one customer is their salespeople, and they're focused on helping salespeople get better, not just in a particular opportunity, but over the long haul. And they set uh, the development and coaching of salespeople as a, a vital priority in their day. And the unsuccessful sales managers, what they tend to do is follow their sales instincts. And you know, many of the things that created uh, uh, somebody that, 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 you know, of the attributes that 
sales managers perfected when they were salespeople uh, can actually inhibit such such as you know high activity level decisiveness um, you, you know uh, um, 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 inability, to, you know, desire to to satisfy the needs of the customers, i.e., not not tell the customer something that mm. causes an objection. You know, that is particularly that one right there. To not say something that might cause a customer objection. If you carry that instinct into your role as a sales manager, and you apply it to dealing with your salespeople. And you don't tell them something that they might object to, your team's not going to get better. I mean, the simple point is with customers, you don't want to rock the boat. With a sales team, you must rock the boat to get the change and the growth you need. Yeah, it's kind of like um, I've seen on uh, comments from you know even coaches or you know um, you know consultants. You know, it's almost like you need to be punched in the mouth and woken up and rattled and shaken to kind of get out of your rut because it just seems like you're that you know frog in the hot water. You just kind of crept up on you, and one day you wake up and it's like, wait a minute, I'm just kind of doing. You know, do you really have ten years of experience, or do you have one year of experience, ten years over? You know, ten times over. Yeah. So. What I, in working with sales management audiences, uh, I like to remind them that uh, the sooner they address a negative behavior with one of their salespeople, uh, the less negative emotion is involved in, in fixing it. Because mm-hmm. whatever that sales rep did, if, I mean, if we don't deal with it, and this, again, gets back to sales managers are so busy, in many cases they're distracted and overwhelmed by all these other things going on. And so what happens is that they move from, from really a a developmental coaching, teaching, inspiring way of operating, which many of them have this, this attribute. I mean, they're the great teachers, but because they get overwhelmed, they get pulled back into this, I don't have enough time. I don't really know what's going on. So I better manage my reps performance. And then what they do is, is, is they kind of make this mental leap that sitting down with a sales rep and talking for, you know, 45 minutes, one-on-one to review his or her numbers and activity level and what they've been doing, that that's coaching. Mm -hmm. But the problem is it's so disconnected from the actual skill or attribute or knowledge that the sales rep used with the customer that created this result. In other words, it's insufficient information. And I mean, you know, right now we're, we're watching the, uh, the, the NCAA March Madness tournament, right, Mike? I mean, uh, uh, it's a great basketball tournament in the United States and college basketball championships. Uh, and, and you see the coaches on the sideline and they're actually – observing their players play and then when a timeout is called they go up and they coach individuals and collectively the team in real time share, yeah in real time and 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 there's not much of that going on mm. and what happens is that the feedback therefore that a coach who has all these natural abilities to be a great teacher are are dormant within him or her and and if we don't provide high quality coaching to our salespeople, why should we be surprised if they're not motivated to implement what we tell them? Yeah. So Kevin, it, it sounds like from what you're saying there, I thought of two specific things. Number one is if you don't address a negative behavior or a, or a behavior that you're noticing, if you leave it alone, isn't it isn't it true that it's almost an affirmation that it's okay? So in other words, you, that salesperson might be doing something or not doing something, and if it's not um, addressed or confronted um, in, a, in a good way, in a coaching way, they just kind of feel like I've been, I'm, whatever I'm doing is working, and it's not even a conscious decision. It's just I'm doing what I do, and until until you confront that and say, "Hey, you know, let's think about this," and you know, did this get the outcome you you were looking for? 
it almost is an affirmation or confirmation that what they're doing is okay. Have you, have you seen that or would you agree with that? Absolutely. And one of the challenges in sales today is, is, is that we have to help salespeople understand the future consequences of a behavior that they either do or don't do, as you, as you explained a moment ago, um, because they may not fully understand the ramifications of what they're doing. Uh, when those ramifications may not, you know, if they're working long sales cycles, it might be, mm-hmm. it might be you know, 30 days or two weeks before they realize, uh, uh-oh, that was a mistake. And so we want to let them know. So what I help sales managers to understand is what you don't confront, you condone. Yeah, yeah, that's the exact, yeah, that's the, the polished up way to say what I was thinking. So yeah, excellent. And, and also coaching or confronting or um, uh, talking about the results, you're almost four steps, two steps too late. Um, Cause it's kind of like the, the sports analogy of, I guess it was Wayne Gretzky that says, you know, I skate to where the puck's going, not to right. where, you know, it, it's been. Well, if you coach the results, there's been a lot of behaviors and activities that went into getting that result or not getting that result. So if you're coaching the behaviors that lead to a good result, then the end results, you know, the byproduct is a, a good end result that you're looking for, right? So you might have waited way too long to, to do your quarterly review or even a monthly review. And, 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 and why exactly what you're saying, Mike, is so important is that when you give feedback that is too late and based on insufficient information because we didn't actually observe it happening, that feedback is perceived as judgmental hmm. or evaluative yeah. type. It's a form of criticism. So what many sales managers think they're coaching their salespeople, many salespeople think what they're getting is criticism. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and, and, and it's simply from the timing. It. Yeah, yeah, simply from the timing. And think about the impact on the sales team culture, morale, uh, goal orientation, engagement, loyalty to the company. I mean, all of these factors, uh, as the saying goes, Salespeople don't quit companies, they quit managers. And so, you know, we have to become a more positive inspiration for the development of our people and be more real, more of a real-time coach like an NCAA basketball coach where we're providing better quality coaching uh, along the way. And that helps communicate that you do really, truly care about the success of your people and also that you have an expectation that they implement your coaching. And that's, that's of course, part of it too, right? I mean, there is a yeah. two-way street. There needs to be a, a commitment on the part of the salesperson to implement good quality coaching. But if, if we're not providing good quality coaching, then why should we be surprised if it's not implemented? Mm-hmm. So what do you do or advise or coach the sales managers who kind of are more of a player, kind of going along with that sports analogy, than a coach? You know, they want to be buddy-buddy or thought of nicely or part of the team. And then when it comes time to, to giving that kind of firm coaching, whenever the time, you know, that the they choose to do the timing, you know, too late or, or right on time, but then that it could be a factor of their guidance not being uh, fully accepted because, you know, just that positioning in the team, right? Well, the, 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 the player uh, uh, image that you, that you talked about is something I, I write about in my book, and it's, it has to do with one of the instincts that all great salespeople have is, is when they get into a challenging situation with a customer, uh, they like to take charge. They like to call the shots and, and, and make something positive happen out of a negative situation. But when that player mentality moves into a sales management role, he or she continues to play. They have this, this instinct inside them that they were rewarded for as salespeople. And so what happens is they go out on a customer call with one of their reps they're in a couple of minutes into the meeting. Their rep is their rep says something that maybe they disagree with, and the manager jumps in and takes over. 
And it's mm-hmm. as if they're saying, you know, move on over, let the great one take over. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that sends a message to the customer that you don't trust your sales rep to effectively handle this situation. And it also sends the same message to your sales rep, which is you don't believe in their capabilities. And, you know, we also provide sales training services and well, you know, in, in, in workshops over the years, I've asked salespeople, what's a frustration you have. And, um, and more, you know, many times one of the, you know, they all can relate to, yeah, my manager jumps in and takes over and that's just the way it is. <laughs> So, uh, it's, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, Steph Curry taking the last shot uh, for the game winning, you know, uh, uh, score. Well, what if the coach stepped in and goes, no, no, I got this. Well, that's what the sales manager is doing when they're stepping in or they're kind of muscling in on that interaction. How is the rep supposed to learn, right? Yeah. And how many player coaches are there in professional sports? Yeah, I'm I'm thinking uh, zero. (laughs) Zero. And there's a reason for that. Yep. You know, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, he who chases two rabbits at one time never catches rabbit. Yep. Either, neither one of them get caught. Hey, so you touched on this earlier, but um, what do you say to a sales manager that finds themselves or feels like they're just putting out fires all the time and there's just no time for this real-time coaching? You know, All they're trying to do is get their reports in or fix this problem. So how do you get that balance back? Well, uh, the the techniques are are not terribly uh, complicated. I talked to a sales manager recently who she told me she has on average 200 email a day. And mm. I don't think that's out of out of the ordinary. I said, "Well, how much time are you spend it on that?" She says, "About 2 hours every day." It's okay. Well, that's 500 hours a year. If she could reduce the amount of time she spends on email by just one third just one third, she would get back 22 full days of coaching time mm. every year. And, you know, it's just, it's the old issue of urgent versus important. You know, we, mm-hmm. we tend to, our email appear has the appearance of urgency, but in many respects, it's not very important. And we manage to get distracted by it and we end up I mean, a great leader is great because he or she places more time and attention on more important leadership duties and responsibilities. So I'd encourage your listeners to ask themselves, you know, every time you do something that someone else can do Mm. to prevent the accomplishment of something, that only you can do, like coaching, like teaching, like inspiring. And, and what happens is that sales managers, salespeople bring us these problems and say, you know, hey, boss, uh, <clears throat> we have a problem. <laughs> we have a problem. And, and, and managers allow themselves to kind of get sucked down that vortex and pulled off their game. And, and in many cases, they devolve into this high paid administrative assistant for their salespeople mm-hmm. and 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 the value of what they're doing. I mean they could they could have phenomenal leadership skills. But if they're not using them and if, if those skills are lying dormant inside them, I mean, how unfortunate for both them and their team. You know, years ago, I went through a coaching program, and I know this is not revolutionary, but uh, it's so hard to do because it sounds easy, you know, because anything easy to do is easy not to do. But um, I was told to write down every 15 minutes what you did in this little, you know, paper, Excel file or whatever. And then at the end of a week or two, um, we went through that and was like, did you have to do this? Did you have to do this one and this one? And so in other words, you're finding out things that, you know, if you looked at your hourly rate, so to speak, you know, where could you find that margin? And like you mentioned about emails, certainly there's a, you know, whole list of things you could do to pare down emails or have an assistant or having technology, whatever the case might be. But even if it was something like, hey, my company won't pay for an assistant for me. Well, guess what? If you calculated as a sales manager, your compensation or commission over the team, 
do you think, yes or no, that you would make more money in at the end of the quarter if you were able to coach, you know, two, three, four hours more per week and just really dedicated coaching time for the team? Of course, the answer is yes. Well, then maybe you need to hire an outsourcer at five, ten, twenty bucks an hour to do some of these things that free up your time so you can focus on that. So I think that's a, a really huge piece of advice you bring up there. Well, thank you, and, and, and I like your suggestion as well. You know, one other thing that I, I advise sales managers do is just to start making appointments for coaching mm. and, and set as a standard every day to coach somebody before noon every day and just set an appointment that from 9 to 10 and then rotate from one sales rep to the next. Mm-hmm. And if you happen to have outside salespeople, then... You know, you could do pre-call planning, post-call recaps, um, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, obviously, uh, if, if, a, if a web demonstration is being delivered, you, could, you can listen in on that and, and offer suggestions and coaching afterwards. Um, there is a, are a variety of different um, efficient coaching opportunities, but, you know, uh, how many times... Do you get a meeting invite from another department? Because other departments and companies, they always want sales as input. And so mm-hmm. you know, the sales manager is like <laughs> the number one most sought after. Hey, let's get sales, sales manager's opinion on this. So you get sucked into all these meetings. Yep. But, but I would ask people to, you know, how often have they said no to, I'm sorry, I can't join the meeting because I'm coaching. Yep. I mean, Probably we're not giving that reason very often because we're not coaching, <laughs> not because we're saying and you don't no value you. that so, time. That I mean, if you had a if a salesperson had an appointment with a top prospect, you wouldn't miss that appointment. And even if you put coaching on your schedule at nine a.m., honor it and honor it for yourself for your team. And so I think that's a, a big big piece. Is you can put it on there, but get it done. And maybe there is a time where you need to turn down something because you're like, Oh, I'm booked at that time. Well, you might be booked, you know, coaching your team. That's a wonderful way to be booked. So let's uh, wrap up with what's the best way that uh, our listeners can learn more about yourself, your company, and also your new book, the sales manager's guide to greatness. Well, uh, they're welcome to stop by my author website at Kevin F. Davis. That's middle initial F as in Frank, KevinFDavis.com, where we have a variety of uh, helpful tools, some uh, some sales management videos there as well. And our business site, uh, TopLineLeadership.com, has a variety of sales coaching resources that are available for download. Of course, the book is available. It's now in bookstores throughout uh, Barnes & Noble stores and other fine booksellers, uh, Amazon, uh, and they're welcome to follow me on Twitter at, at Kevin F. Davis. And, uh, you know, stop by, check out uh, blog articles. I'm you know, blogging twice a week on uh, topics of, of importance to sales managers. You know, there's, there's just such a, a, a need to, to help uh, these uh, uh, great people get better and, that's really my passion. Well, Kevin, it was so wonderful talking to you. I loved the, the ideas that we we spoke about, and that it just seems so. Uh, some of these are so simple, but again, just take take it at, uh, uh, to heart that the things that are simple to do are simple not to do, and re-listen to this interview, pick up some of these nuggets, and implement them in your business. So, thank you so much for taking time out of your day, Kevin, and uh, we really appreciate your advice. Thank you, Mike. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.